Hi, and welcome to week 11 of Great Writers of English Literature. This week, we're going to be reading from Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, Dracula. Our reading from Dracula this week will include diary entries from Jonathan Harker, who has gone to Transylvania to arrange a real estate deal for Dracula. During Harker's stay, though, he realizes that he's trapped in Dracula's castle and that the Count is not an ordinary mortal, but a blood-sucking monster. You're probably already familiar with Dracula from popular culture, and you know the usual stuff about vampires, that they're undead creatures surviving on the blood of the living, that they can't be exposed to the sun, and that the vampire's bite transforms an ordinary mortal into the same kind of blood-sucking monster. What you may not realize is that the novel also plays on English fears about sexuality, about women's liberation, and especially about Jews and foreigners. This video draws from an excellent article by Greg Buswell, a curator at the British Library, which shows how Stoker's book reveals Victorian political and social prejudices. According to Buswell, the vampire has always been a contradictory figure, both glamorous and horrifying, and he sees that contradiction start with Dracula, the most famous vampire novel of all time. In addition to telling a vampire story, Stoker's book also sets up a kind of conflict between old traditions and new ideas. And the author uses the vampire as a symbol for a lot of the anxieties English people had at the end of the 19th century. One of those anxieties concerned the spread of corruption and depravity. This is shown, for instance, when the vampire wanders the streets of London looking to attack people and drink their blood. Dracula walks around without being noticed in the crowded streets of the big city, but he carries the threat of vampirism with him like a disease. Buswell says that plays into late Victorian fears of unrestricted immigration, which many English people thought was leading to increased levels of crime and the disintegration of communities. Dracula sets up multiple safe houses for himself in London, making it harder to find him and eliminate the threat of vampirism. One of these houses was in Whitechapel, an area notorious for the Jack the Ripper murders of 1888. The Ripper murders are important historical context because many people thought at the time that this infamous serial killer was living in the so-called Jewish ghetto and that the local Jewish community was protecting the murderer as one of its own. In this case, the Dracula figure is kind of a double for Jack the Ripper, a secretive foreign killer who blends in with the others. Indeed, rhetoric about immigrants as murderers or vectors for disease or as bad hombres continues to be a very active part of current political discourse. Fear of aliens or immigrants was behind the British Aliens Act of 1905, which was put in place largely to stem immigration from Eastern Europe. Buswell also tells us that the act of vampirism itself, with its notion of tainted blood, suggests the fear of sexually transmitted diseases such as syphilis, and more generally, the fear of physical and moral decay that was believed by many commentators to be afflicting society during the Victorian time. The vampire is not only a symbol of the potential for violence, but also a threat to English female virtue menaced by foreign predators. The Count targets beautiful young Englishwomen and tells the vampire hunter Professor Van Helsing that your girls that you all love are mine already. The sexuality and the supposed moral weakness of girls and women makes them especially vulnerable to the vampire's attacks. But this means that they are 
also easily transformed into vampires themselves, becoming agents of death and disease. We see this not only from the attacks on the two main female characters of the book, Mina and Lucy, both English women, but also from the depiction of the female vampires in Dracula's castle, who have given themselves over to eating babies instead of nurturing them. The way these foreign women seduce Jonathan shows the way their sexuality is mixed up with their other unholy appetites. As you study the assigned reading, look carefully at the way Stoker describes Dracula and the female vampires who live in his castle. Notice how Jonathan's disgust seems to be wrapped up with an implicit bias against anyone not English. For your writing this week, pretend you're an English politician from 1897 and use the assigned reading, this video, and if you wish, Buswell's essay to write a speech about Transylvanian immigration policy.